Hey everybody, Marcia from Be So Creative. We are going to be starting a new little program with quick little projects that are absolutely perfect for gift giving or practicing your skills, whether you are a super duper experienced quilter or sewer, or you are brand new to sewing because you bought a new sewing machine and so you could make masks during our exciting 2020 year. And now you've got this really cool machine and you're going, well, what else can I make with it? Because I'm tired of making masks. So our first project that we're going to do is this really cute little placemat. The placemat is super simple, easy to make. And the thing that I like about it is the fact that this one has these nice little uh, sliced off edges which really is going to make it look not quite so um, basic. So we're going to get a little bit fancy. So what you're going to need for this project is you will need, if you want to make four placemats, you need one yard of your main fabric, which I consider that on the top of the placemat. You will need a yard of your backing fabric and you will need a yard of your batting. And that's what's gonna go in between here and give that placemat just a little bit more umph. It's not just, just fabric being sewn together. So what we're gonna do is we're going to cut our one yard pieces into four 13 and a half by 17 and a half inch rectangles. So we're gonna switch over here to this camera so that you can see what I have here. So the first thing that I have, let me pull this back. This is my backing fabric for my placemat and it has been measured and cut 13 and a half this way and 17 and a half across this way. I also have hidden under there is my layer of cotton batting. Now the thing is that when you use and make placemats or hot pads, you want to use cotton batting because polyester batting, if you set a really hot pot on there, it can actually go through and melt your polyester batting. And we don't want that to happen because then it gets hard and it's icky. So cotton batting is your friend. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 13 and a half by 17 and a half inch cotton batting and it's going to go on first thing. Then we're going to take our backing fabric and we're going to put that wrong side. See here's the, the wrong side is always the kind of dull side. So the wrong side is going to be laid on top of our cotton batting. So there we go. And we're just going to smooth that out. Make sure everything is good, right? And then last but not least, here is my really pretty little main fabric. This is going to be the front or the top side of the placemat. And I'm going to put it right side to right side. So here's the right side of my pretty top fabric. And here's the right side of my backing fabric. And we're going to put those two together. Okay. So then um, I would pin all of these layers together. So let me do this real quick. And the reason that you want to pin them is you do not want your fabrics shifting and coming unaligned because then you have this wonky donkey placemat. And um, needless to say, we don't want that to happen. Let me, let me come over here. I know I am impressing you all with my uh, pinning skills. I think I've been doing this a while. What do you all think? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Long time. Okay. All right. Then the next thing that we're going to do is to make this little, cut off those corners. We want to make sure that we have them even. So can you all see all four of these? Are nice and even so we want to make sure that we that we're doing that so what I have done is and of course I forgot my ruler so let me reach over here and from each corner 
you're going to measure from here down to two and a half and you're going to put a mark and you're going to do it in both directions. Can you all see that okay? Okay, so, and we're going to do that for all four corners. So here we go again. Line up the corner, two and a half, put your mark. Come over here, line up with the corner, two and a half. And if you all will notice, I have done all four corners of my placemat. Then we're going to take this guy and here is our little rotary cutter and remember rotary cutter is our friend and we're going to line that up and you can see I'm right there in that corner on my little mark and we're going to cut those off. Easy peasy, yes? And then let's just go ahead and give that a quick little pin. And I'm going to do all four sides here, okay? So again, there's my marks, two and a half inches down from the corner in both directions. Here's my rotary ruler. I've lined them up on my little marks, and we're going to cut those off. I'm going to do all four corners. All right. Marco, did that turn out okay? Did we, did we get them good? All right, excellent. All right, let's be sure and pin those little corners as well. So then that way everything stays stable. Because when I go to sew these, I want to make sure that they stay where I want them. Now, we're going to do a method that is called the birthing method. I, if you will notice, I do not have any kind of binding on this placemat. So we're going to make this one and it's going to be exactly like this. So the method that we're going to do is, it's called the birthing method. And so what that means is that we're going to sew all the way around our placemat, but on one side, we're going to leave about a three inch opening. And let me show you how I do that so I don't have to mark it. I take my ruler like this and I do a double pin right next to each other. Okay, just like that. And then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to flip this around because I can pin it right next to that. And I'm going to do the same thing again here. Now let me tell you why I do that. I want to make sure that as I'm sewing around that I know when I come to my double pins I'm going to start here and sew around and I'm going to stop here. And the reason that I do that is because I don't want to sew all the way over there and then go, oh shoot, I've got to unsew. Because uh, truthfully, I don't know about y'all, but unsewing is not my favorite thing to do when I am working on a project. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to switch cameras and I'm going to show you how we're going to sew this. So follow me over here. Okay, now remember, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask Marco, cause Marco is helping me today with uh, filming this. Marco, can you see this? Yeah, well, uh, is the light too bright? No, I got it. You got it? Uh -huh. Okay, so <clears throat> now the reason that um, I am using the 1D foot for the Bernin Berninas, and it is a dual feed foot. It's kind of like a walking foot. So what we're going, well, the reason I'm using this is because um, I've got batting and all. You are able to use your walking foot if you need to, and that way it keeps your batting from getting kind of pushed forward as we sew. Now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, and you guys can't see, but I am starting just outside my double pins here. And I am going to take a few stitches and then I'm going to reverse 
and just take a couple of stitches backwards and we're going to sew all the way around. I think I better turn this up a little. Now when I get to this corner, we're going to st stitch up. And then what I do is I always check myself and I'm going to turn and see if my foot is at the quarter inch. So yes, here we go. We're going to go around here. Stop and turn. See, and I'm, so I'm using the edge of my foot here, and I've moved my needle so it's a quarter of an inch. If you have a quarter inch foot and that's more comfortable for you to use, then please use whatever foot you have that's going to make it easy for you to maintain that nice quarter inch, okay? Okay, so here we're getting close. Turn and see the, the edge of my foot's right there on my fabric. Turn, there we go. We're coming in the home stretch. Now you all remember, what did I tell you? There's my double pin. So we started here and we're going to stop here. All right, so here we go. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, because I know right where I need to stop. So I'm going to pull these two out because they're kind of hogging the, the aisle here. And we're going to back stitch a little bit and we're finished. So we're going to cut our threads and there is our placemat. So now this is what we're going to do. Uh, Marco, I'm going to come back over here so we can lay it out so they can see what we're going to do next. All right, here we are. Now, as you all can see, we have sewn all the way around our placemat using a quarter inch seam allowance. Let's get rid of the pins. And then I'm gonna show you what you need to do next. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to do is when you're looking at corners like this, you always wanna be able to push that corner out. And so I want you to remember that everywhere there's a corner, we have three layers. We have the two layers of fabric. So here's our one layer. Here's our second layer. And then here's our, our chubby batting. And so the, the thing that happens is that um, our batting makes it hard for these points to come out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut across. Now don't cut real close to those, but you just want to clip that point just a bit so that when it's time to turn my placemat, I am not going to have any kind of issues with the batting being chubby and taking up space. There's nothing wrong with being chubby until you get smushed in a corner and then it's not fun. All right, so get rid of that because I know that'll stick to our stuff won't it Sharon okay so now this is why this is called birthing because what we're going to do is we're going to there's our opening remember so we have our little opening here and this is really a nice way to do this so we're going to reach in and I use my fingers like this Marco is that okay can you see and we're going to I just spilled the pins <laughs> Shoot. Ah, golly. 
and they're sticking to the batting. Oh my gosh, get over there, guys. All right, we're going to flip this right side out. And you guys are going to go, oh gosh, that's cute, because it is cute. Pull this out. Sharon, is there any way? I forgot an iron. And I think there is there one behind you? Yes, the baby iron and... Sorry about that, Sharon. I just want you all to know I just love my people because they, they are like super duper folks. Okay, so see, now here we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we are going to turn this right side out, which we've done, and now your job is to reach up in here and you're going to use your fingers and you're going to poke those corners out. And if the corners are being stubborn, which sometimes they are, because remember, you do have those three layers of fabric and batting and all of that kind of stuff, then you really need to be able to push those out. And I will tell you, one of my most favorite things is the purple thing. Do we have a purple thing in that deal, Sharon? Okay. Now, there we go. Oh, look at how good that's looking. Up. Oh, see, he's still kind of a watered up guy, so if I need to, I'll take my little point of my scissor and be gentle, but get in there where the batting is. There we go. See how nice that came out? Gorgeous. Okay. There we are. All right. Now, look at how nice that looks. So your job now is to just kind of work that around, and then we're going to give it a little press with our little iron. Okay, and then let's turn it here. Now, what you may need to do is get your fingers wet, and, and I know um, in uh, pre-COVID we always licked our fingers, but um, I would just get, you know, if you're making this as a gift and you don't want to wash them before you do it, then go ahead and get yourself a uh, a little cup of water. Oh, perfect, Sharon, thank you. I'm gonna show you all a couple of things. Now, this is a purple thing, and my friend Lynn Graves is the one who invented the purple thing, and uh, I worked with her for many years when we lived in Chama. So let me show you how this works. This end is a quarter inch, and this end is kind of like a stiletto. So what you do is, I would take that and I would go into the corner with, with the pointy end and see I can push that out. And that way it is always gonna be able to help me. And I will tell you, I have these all over my sewing room, by the iron, by the uh, AccuQuilt, cutting table, sewing machine. They're, they're everywhere because they are your friend. Now, I will tell you, I know that there's somebody else that's making them, and they're calling them the thang. Shame on them. Um, anyway, Lynn Graves is the one who developed the, that and sold it for many years. So, so be sure and get the original purple thang, T-H-A-N-G. All right, so see how I'm going along here and I'm pressing? If it's a little bit lumpy, you know, I'm sorry. This is my placemat, so I'm spitting on it. <laughs> Um, okay, there we go. We're going to press that down. Look, isn't this cute? Yes. All right, so here we go. So now when we get over here, we do have this little hole, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to turn, and if you can turn that like so, and if you will notice, this is, this is automatically turning to a quarter of an inch. Isn't that cool? So you're not trying to figure out, oh, wait a minute, now why isn't that doing this? 
it's automatically going to turn to be the same as its friends on both sides. So what I like to do is I get it to turn like so. There we go. Ta -da -da. And we're going to go ahead and pin that. And I'm going to pin it in three or four places across here because I want that to stay right where I need it to be. I don't want it flopping around when I'm going to sew around my edge. And you all will understand what I'm talking about here in just a second. But see how he's still kind of wadded up. So we're going to give him a little press. Um, if you want, you could actually have a little spray bottle or a mist bottle of water. Okay, I'm telling you, we're getting a really cute placemat so far. Okay, let's go back to the sewing machine. So, Marco, we're heading back over here. Now, I want to tell y'all, I don't care what kind of machine you have, but the thing that I want you to realize is learn to use your feet as a guide. And when I say that, let me show you what I'm talking about. Um, Marco, can you get a, a wee bit closer? A wee bit? There we go. Oh, perfect. Okay, so I want to show you something. Now, now this is a closed toe foot. It's not open anywhere here. It's only open back here with the, um, where the needle goes in and out. But what I like to do is I have learned to use all parts of my feet as a guide for where I want something to be. Holy cow, Marco, that's a great, that's a great, oh, I'm really glad you all can see this. So here's the deal. This is what I'm going to do. Now, on most machines, you are able to use, move the needle. Is that probably a true statement? Some yes, some no. So what we're going to do is this. Now remember, we used, man, oh man, I can't believe how good that picture is. We used the quarter of an inch, didn't we, to sew around this when they were uh, right sides together. But what we're going to do is we're going to use the inside toe right here. We're going to use the inside of that toe as my guide as I sew around the outside edge. And because I'm going to do that, I'm going to move my needle a couple of places. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to put our foot down. Now, can you all see that right here is the toe, inside toe of my foot, and right here is the outside edge, okay, of my little placemat. Now, let me get this tucked in there because that's my threads from where I turned. Here we go. All right, we're gonna, I need my needle to be in the down position, so let's just do that real quick. Do you see how I'm using that inside toe of my foot to, as my guide for where my, and then this way, the nice thing about doing that is the fact that my stitching will be the same as I go around the whole placemat. And I like that. Turn. Isn't that just the most perfect guide? And that's going to be about an eighth of an inch, so that is always a good thing.
Got one more. Turn. And look, guys, we're back around almost to where we started. What I like to do is I like to go ahead and stitch right into the stitching that I've already put down. And then that kind of, um, that kind of locks your stitch. Ta-da! There is our placemat. Now, you have one other thing that you need to do. And, and this is kind of important because I just want to show you all, this is why we want to do this. We don't want our pieces, I don't know if you can see that, but do you see how I've pulled that away on both sides? We want to make sure that when we wash our placemats, because I will tell you that somebody will spill something on your placemat, and you can't get excited, you just have to say, it's washable. So this is what we're going to do. You can either just start here, and so this is where I'm going to start, and I'm going to do a little stitching. And I'm just going to draw a big X in the middle of my placemat. And I'm going to give it a little back stitch. And we're going to... All right, there's one direction, so see, there it is. Now, I, I left it in the white on the back so you all could actually see it when we do a close-up. There we go. So I, I wanted you to see that, but normally you would match the background fabric to the thread that you're going to use in the bobbin area. All right, so we went that way. back stitch. Ta-da! There is our little placemat. The nice thing about that is that it is now not going to come up, um, separate in the center when you wash it. This is going to keep it nice and together. If you wanted to get real fancy like I did on that placemat, let me grab it here. I got, I got a little fancy on this one just because I could. Okay, so do y'all see what I did? I just did all curvy lines. And I started and I curved this way, and then I came over here and I curved. And then this way, it was just kind of fun. It's a fun way to, to practice some uh, just funky quilting. Um, you couldn't really see it on the front of this because I wasn't thinking about y'all when I made this. So I put, I matched my threads. Uh, so navy was on the front and red thread was in my bobbin so but you are able to do that with this as well so if you know if you wanted to you could come up here and sew straight down and then straight across and then your little placemat would be just about perfect so anyway that is our project um, we have on our website the little instructions that you need for the fabric and for how to cut the placemat and then you always have this video as a tutorial on how to do it so anyway I hope that you've enjoyed this little project and uh, if you make some would you be sure and put them on our be so creative uh, Facebook page we'd love to see what you all have done so I hope you all have enjoyed this little tutorial and be on the lookout we'll have another one all ready to go for next week. Thanks guys, have a great rest of your day.